Hey again guys and welcome back. Uh, today should be a quick video. I just want to show you this thing. Um, this is a 3D printed soldering vise. I know a lot of you have been complaining about me uh, sort of freehand soldering all over the place and complaining about my helping hands that uh, don't help as much as they look like they should. So um, I went and grabbed this off of Thingiverse, link in the description below because I had seen it on a pile of stuff video. Link to that video also in the description. So this is something that you can uh, print yourself or if you don't have a 3D printer, usually your local library will allow you to print things or your local university will allow you to print things um, for fr well, free of time and you have to pay for filament or sometimes just very low cost and barring that, you can also go onto uh, like a website like Shapeways and they'll print it and send it to you. So uh, the deal is they've got these little grooves here, there and there, and that's supposed to hold a rubber band. And they also have these grooves up here to hold a PCB. So I'm not sure which rubber band to use here, but I'm just gonna try a random one. And then I have a few circuit boards to try it in. So I got uh, this guy here, which will be probably the ultimate test if that's uh, an odd shape. Here I have this uh, metal detector kit here. Maybe that rubber band was a bit too stiff. So you have to really pick your rubber band for your situation, which is why, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to like this thing, but only one way to find out and it's to try it out. Let's see here. So already, like, see lots of play in those jaws. Will it fit? It does, it, like, it does seem to have a lot of uh, variability in it. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, it's really a pain in the butt to try to get it lined up. Oh, nope, slipped. There we go. All right, so that's holding on to that. And now can I go and solder on it? Yeah, you know what? Kind of no matter where I solder, I'm pressing pretty hard. That's not bad. I think my only problem is if I need to flip it around to add components, it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Let's try something a little bit smaller. So you got this surface mount board here. It's a uh, buck converter. Boost converter? No, buck converter. It is a buck converter. Slide that in there. Okay, so even though these grooves aren't very deep, this board is very small, so the components foul on the jaws. But let's see, if I had to do some SMD work here, you know, that's quite solid. It moves this way, but that's not a big deal. Okay, that's not bad. Let's try a huge board now, like this guy. So already I see that height is an issue because I wouldn't be able to put it in this way. What about this way? Yeah, this thing is... Uh, Yeah, you know, so my thoughts are um, this is worth a print for sure, um, but I'm already thinking of ways to sort of build my own where these kind of inconveniences aren't there. Like I want something easier to install and deinstall and maybe a base with some bolt holes or something so I can bolt it to a, I don't know, a little piece of plywood so it's super solid. The ultimate test is definitely this odd shaped board. You can get this wide enough to fit this in. And it looks like I should be able to get like one side totally in. Yeah, it's really, you gotta learn that these, uh, these jaws have to be at the right angle in order to slide. So let's mount this actually upside down. Grab that like that. 
Yeah, you know, the... The LEDs are very close to the edge, so they're kind of fouling on the, uh, the the jaws. But even so, look at that. They're being the jaws are being spread sort of outwards like this, making it even less clearance for the LEDs. If they were angled properly, they'd actually be better. Yeah, this is a good start. You guys should check it out. Check out the video a uh, pile of stuff did on this in the description below, and grab yours at the Thingiverse link in the description. Thanks for watching.